who kindly translated this Gita and, and, and added commentaries, not only of his commentaries, but also from his previous spiritual masters. And he says, there are various theories regarding consciousness. Here in Bhagavad Gita, the example of the sun and the sun sign is given. As the sun is situated in one place, but is illuminating the whole universe, so a small particle of spirit soul, although situated in the heart of this body, is illuminating the whole body by consciousness. This consciousness is the proof of the presence of the soul, soul yes. A sunshine or light is a proof of the presence of the sun. sun. Yeah. When the soul is present in the body, there is consciousness all over the body. As soon as the soul is passed from the body, there is no more consciousness. consciousness. This can be easily understood by any intelligent man. Therefore, consciousness is not a product of the combinations of matter. It is the symptom of the living entity. The consciousness of the living entity, although qualitatively one with the supreme consciousness, is not supreme because the consciousness of one particular body does not share that of another body. But the super soul which is situated in all bodies as the brand of the living soul, individual soul is conscious of all bodies. That is the difference between the supreme consciousness and the individual consciousness. So individual consciousness that comes from us, the spirit soul, but the supreme consciousness I just said in the beginning, Krishna is Vasudeva, is all pervading, he said, in every atom, is in between the atoms. So he's also in our heart. And he's in our heart. How do we know he's in our heart? He controls material nature, he controls this body. Who controls his heartbeat here? Someone controls his heartbeat. Who controls your heartbeat? Krishna in the heart. Yes. Who is controlling his digestion? I think at the end we will have some spiritual food here to distribute. Yes. And then we have digestion. I hope so. Otherwise you are in trouble. You don't have digestion. Do we know how it goes? No. But it happens. It's Krishna who makes it happen. Krishna says also in Bhagavad Gita that Sarvasya Sarang Ridishani Krishna. As he says, I'm situated in everyone's heart. And he says, Mata Smiti Hanam Abhamsa. For me, for me comes remembrance, knowledge, and forgetfulness. Krishna says, Whatever you remember, I cause that remembrance. By my grace you remember, and by my mercy you forget. We forget so many things. That's, uh, that's so remembrance and knowledge. We may have knowledge, we may forget it. It's all to his mercy. It's not really under our control. That, uh, so that is what Krishna says here. But now I want to look at it from another angle. Oh my God, my team, I'm not sure, 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 I'm not so I have a question for you. Who amongst you did ever make jigsaw puzzles? You know these puzzles in a box? You? No more? You never made a jigsaw puzzle? Yeah? Yeah? Yeah, yeah nearly everyone, right? But what's the method that, that you use? You get all the pieces in the box, but what do you do? What's the method? How, how do you make the puzzle? How do you begin? Do the edges first. The edges, the borders. 
and, and especially the four. Hmm? Formless. Formless and borders. Yeah. And other methods? Look at the pictures and then you see what matches. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> you get you, you, you get see this the whole picture. You have you have to see what you want to yeah. get. Image. So the, on the box you have a picture mm -hmm. and, you, and you take a magnifying glass and a piece and you see where okay, does it fit in, <laughs> right? That, so the point is where does the piece fit in the bigger picture? So I want to speak about a few pieces and then look at the bigger picture that uh, I've studied at the university a doctorate in the study of religion and Indian religions especially and uh, I realized that pe mostly people in India from Indian background they believe that they are spirit soul within the body and we move from one body to an another body, right? But, but in, in the West it's, it's different. It starts to change a bit, but it's different. As, as, especially in the Judeo-Christian religion that they think, yes, we have a soul, we have a soul, but, but, but I'm, I'm this person, I'm this body, and I have also a soul. That's different. That's not the same thing. But we just spoke about consciousness. And that's interesting. That there were uh, some researchers that, uh, well, and that, that's a phenomenon, a phenomenon, a phenomenon that you find all over the world. They conduct operations and during the operation the patient does not show any electroencephalogram, no brain activity, no heart beating, clinically dead. But during the operation, after the operation they tell so many things what happened during the operation? Is that I was floating on the ceiling. I could see the letters on the lamp, on the ceiling. That uh, I could, they could hear what the doctor said to the nurses. They could see, they could hear. But they are clinically dead. And that's documented. That's documented. They, they, for these operations, they, they keep a logbook. Everything that happened during the operation, they write on. That. There, there was one doctor, and he did not believe in this out of the body uh, things. And, but then he, he got time for it. And during more than four hours, he had no heartbeat, no brain activity. But during that time, he had the realization that his real self was different from the body. He had an out of the body experience. And by that, he, after that, he became convinced that he is different from the body. But then there was another researcher, his name was Michael Saban, and I was thinking all this out of the body histories, it's all invented. This cannot be true, he said. But this Michael Saban, he said, I will do a research and prove that. And he got the documentation of 
of many of these out of the body experiences that uh, and he spoke with these patients he heard, they, they heard what he had to say and and he he compared this, this with the medical files and after many cases of research he concluded it is true it's all confirmed but they say it's confirmed with the medical files so what does this mean this is a phenomenon which is going on for years and it's well known that uh, he, he was not, Michael Sagan was not the only researcher of this phenomenon. There were many others, and they all confirmed this. That. And then there is not one piece of the puzzle. Another piece of the puzzle is the research of Dr. Ian St Stevenson. Stevenson has done 35 years of research on young children between 2 and 4 years. He had researched about, in depth, about 400 cases in his life. And these children, they had remembrances of their previous lives. And he went, and you can see, you can see the results of this research. You go on Google and you say Ian Stevenson reincarnation, and you will get all the cases, all the all the evidence is there on the internet. And 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 many of these young children, they, and first these children, although his main research was in Bangladesh there, there have been researches on children all over the world it's not just to a particular area but between two and four years and they remember their previous lives and they start to talk about that when they are very young and, and they could find their previous parents identify them and they did they, they did tests the child was explaining all their remembrances that was noted and then they went they tried to identify the parents and they identified the parents before the child met them and then later they make an arrangement that that child met the parents from previous lives and it's and and they did test they mixed they mixed their parents with other persons but first they identified their parents their sisters their brother and and they revealed many things in some cases 17 points that confirms this this which only their children could have known but most of these cases and you can read the whole thing most of these cases they are they are got an unnatural death a certain that's an accident or being murdered or whatever sudden because if if you have a normal death a normal death then your the death is not so dramatic you are psychologically preparing for that but when it's sudden, then it's unprocessed, and especially in these cases, the remembrance comes in young children 
that's what Ian Stevenson found. And that, that's very interesting. That, that, uh, and also he, he found birth marks. There was a child and at, at, his, at his belly, at seven specific places, like marks. And the child remembered in his previous life that that the person was drunk and got and got in a fight with another drunkard and got and, and he was stabbed by, by a knife in seven places and that has been documented in seven places exactly where, where that is and this little side there these seven birthmarks only exactly the same places and there are so many so many evidence. This is scientific evidence. So that's another another part of the puzzle. Now here we speak about consciousness. What I find interesting is some uh, scientists they think yes, consciousness must come from the brain. So one researcher, well, that, that's known that certain parts in the brain are responsible, and certain nerves are responsible for the movements of the hands, for the legs, and so on. And um, he could, by electric, imp electric impulses, activate that part. And he would activate it, and the per like like the, the part of the brain for the for the left arm, and the left arm would go up. So he would apply that to a person. He activated it, and his left arm went up. And he said to the person, "You have left, you, you have lifted your left arm." And the person said, "No, I did not. You did." So, and then the researcher asked, now you lift your hand. He lifts his hands, his hand, but they cannot find anything in the brain that makes that happen. But does that, what, what is the power that, that makes that change? It's our consciousness. It's consciousness according to Bhagavad Gita is in a subtle body. We have a gross body, a subtle body, and we are the spirit soul, the living entity. That. And that's another part of the puzzle. And then there are much more things like that. Science says every every six, seven years. Every cell in your body changes. Every six years. Well, every year about 500 million cells in your body are dying and being renewed. Can we imagine? Every day. After six years you have a complete new body. So everyone here has a, has a baby body, right? You remember that? You remember you had a baby body? Who remembers that you had a baby body? You remember? No? You remember? No? Hmm? But when you were six years old, nothing you remember? It's all forgotten? Okay. But what you learned at seven, eight years in school, do you remember something? Yes, sir. Huh? I think so. How can you remember? All your cells, cells are changed. Means you are not the body. That's what it means. That, uh... Mm -hmm. Memories, yeah. Memories, yeah. So memories are not coming from the girl's body. To a certain extent, yes. 
that there have been tests. People wrote their brain that they had only 20% of their brain and the rest was, was cervical liquid and they were functioning normally. How do we explain that? There's a lot of research to do on that. But I know many of you have other beliefs it blocks you to, to accept that. But this is all is all built fits in a bigger picture. And that bigger picture is Bhagavad Gita. Here everything is explained how this happens, how we go from one body to another. That, um, so this is um, a part of a puzzle. But what he does say is we are the consciousness in the body and we are eternal. We are eternal. The body, the body is temporary. That. But we want, what do we all want? We want love and to be loved. That's what we want. Because that's, that's the need of the soul of our real self to love and to be loved, to be happy. But what do we get in this life? You think you are the body. And Krishna says that's a problem. If you think you are the body, then you live your whole, your, your whole life for the body. And you think, this is related to my body, this is mine. That uh, I see many people, they are taking a big loan. A big loan. For a house. And then they go to the bank and they get a mortgage. And they work, they work their whole life to get a house. I mean, they are nearly 60 or 65. It's paid, and they say, it's mine. And three, four years later, they die. Whatever you want to achieve in this life, it's for nothing. You, one person may be fully happy and achieve everything what he, what he gets in his life, and the other person is poor, ugly, is defamed by everyone. That uh, what do both persons get at the, at the end of their life? They die, they get the same thing. So living for giving pleasure to the body, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, one lives in vain for nothing. One must live to get this eternal law to get love. But to get this love, one must learn how to please the beloved. That's love, is pleasing the beloved. Sacrificing everything to please the beloved. And the Bhagavad Gita explains the origin of all love is God. God loves us. That, uh, but he wants to share that love with us. But if we try to seek pleasure in this world, then we cannot get contact with God. We identify with the body, temporary body. And Krishna explained us because our, our consciousness is covered by false ego, we think we are this body. We think, yes, I'm a man, 
a nobleman, an English or a French or whatever, that these are all temporary designations. And people fight for these designations. They think that the land where I'm born, that's the best country. That uh, I am mine. But it's false. Soon you leave this body, your, conscious go, 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 your consciousness with the soul goes to the next destination. That, uh, so a real happiness we can get when we understand the bigger picture. The bigger picture. Not just a moment. We are here just for a little moment to get real love. One must love God. And God means also all living entities. How to develop that love is only by giving and not asking something in return. That uh, relations many times in this world are based on giving and taking. Business. Business relationship. You give, you give to me. And many times it's, it's you give to me, I take from you. <laughs> and that's the unfortunate thing. Real relationships comes when we don't act to exploit others, but only give that. And that's the condition that pure love only giving without something on your turn, Krishna says, that's the condition to come in contact with me and receive the love of the Supreme Lord. That He loves us, but we can only receive that love if we act out of love. Act out of love means acting with pleasing the beloved without, without, without asking something in return. So we have said Krishna is in the heart. He's in the heart together with us. We are the source of our consciousness. But Krishna is also in the heart as the super soul of the Holy Spirit. And he controls material nature. But he gives also on our sense of love and satisfaction. I know many nuns and monks all over the world. And they all, they try to serve God and humanity according to their conception of God. And that's all right. And they, they live just to give, to give to others. And they all say, I feel some satisfaction in my heart from that. I feel satisfied by that. that uh, so that satisfaction is given by Krishna within the heart. If one acts to exploit others, and even one commits a murder, how oh, will the Will, will, the, will the murderer be, be, feel happy after he did it? No. Of one, of one that's felt very selfish, steals money or whatever, in the heart there will always be that guilt. And that's God in the heart who says that's not good. So real satisfaction comes when we please Krishna, God, and other living entities, acting out only out of love, giving without asking something in return. And that's the basis of love. That, but that requires a deeper understanding of who we are. If, if we think we are the body, then we try to give satisfaction to the body. But there is the body and there is the soul. What is the need of the soul? What is the need of the body? 
We know all the need of the body. Need of the body is nice food. The, that the satisfaction of the mind and the senses. But that's all temporary, this body. But the soul is eternal, Krishna says. Krishna says, one who takes birth is sure to die. And one who dies is sure to take birth. So, here Krishna gives the bigger picture. There is only, not only this life, there are previous lives. How can you explain that people suffer in this life? Krishna says it's the law of karma. It's because in previous lives, they have caused suffering to others and how they get a reaction. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, I'm in the heart. Krishna says, I know past, present and future of all living entities. That's quite a potency, unlimited. He knows that of all living entities, of all times. So we suffer because of our reaction in the past. And we get happiness of the body because of our reactions in the past. That means the soul moves from body to body. And that bigger picture is explained in Bhagavad Gita. And that Bhagavad Gita teaches us how to live a spirit soul, eternal spirit soul. And come out of the illusion that we are the body. That's the bigger picture. But interesting, all this scientific research and their conclusions, it fits in this Bhagavad Gita. This is the bigger picture. Thank you very much. Any questions? Yes. I have one question. <coughs> Someone was asking me recently, well they were telling me about when somebody takes like uh, psychedelic drugs, the the part of their brain that lights up when they take the drug is the same part of the brain that lights up when someone has a spiritual experience. So I don't know if you could explain yeah, because uh, spiritual experience are not experiences of the body. So, so that to establish what is a bona fide spiritual experience, that cannot be measured by any material means. It's not just not possible. But the, the point is that what is spiritual realization? That uh, spiritual realization is simply understanding who we are. And, and to understand who we are, that requires knowledge, which is given in Bhagavad Gita. We have the first thing to know is who we are. We are a spirit soul. Then we need to know who God is, the supreme spirit soul, the source of everything, the controller of everything. That, uh, and then we must understand that we are a part of God, part and parcel, and that we have a relationship. And acting in that relationship is called Bhakti Yoga and that spiritual life. It's simple, it's simple that it's based on transcendental knowledge. Everything belongs to God. And because he's the proprietor of everything, he's the enjoyer of everything. And as part and parcels, it's our duty to give him enjoyment selfless love, we are out, we do everything out of love for God. And but then, what does Krishna give you? He gives you this spiritual experience. And that's love, bhakti. He gives first, first stage of that spiritual happiness is that one gets rid of suffering. People suffer 
because they are attached to things in this world and they think they are the body. One thinks, oh, this is my God, I paid for it. And then someone make, makes a little scratch on it and you feel the pain because you are attached to it. So that illusion goes. We understand things do not belong to us but to God and he gives it to us under our care to be used in his service, that's all. So it's, it's based on this understanding. Everything belongs to God and everything is meant for his service. And if, if we use it in his service, out of love, Krishna gives you experiences in the heart. It starts with satisfaction, but, but when, you, when the heart becomes pure of this lust, anger, greed and so on, then you become happy in everything you do. And I give you an example of that. In the 70s, we had many brahmacharis, young monks, joining the movement. And there was such a brahmachari in the temple. And uh, someone came, and a young lady, a reporter, was writing an article for uh, a magazine. And she came to, to interview the young monk. And she asked the young monk that, uh, so, uh, do you have a job? And the Brahmachari monk smiled broadly and said, No, I don't have. And then the lady asked, her, do, do you have any possessions, a house or a car? And, and the monk said, he, he smiled again, said, No, I don't have anything. And, and she asked, Do you have a girlfriend? And, and, the, and the monk said, no, I don't have. And then the lady the reporter became impatient and, and she cried out, why then are you so happy? So people think they will become happy by amassing possessions, getting this and that and that. But we see even in this country, everything becomes so complicated. You have to work very hard. If you don't work very hard, the next one is do they have to take your job immediately. The, and that, and that people, they, they, they are living to work, but we should work to live. It becomes very, and, and so many cases of, of mental anxiety, depression and so on. But when you are in spiritual life and you know these instructions of Bhagavad Gita, how to act as a spirit soul. And, uh, and, that's a, and that's a big school to learn. There are more than 700 instructions in this book. And you must all realize them to start realizing this, this, this law and give up this attachment. The attachment we can give up only by becoming attached to Krishna and his service, attached to act out of love for God. And that gives you really the satisfaction. I'm more than 30 years in this process. And I can say after 30 years that I'm much less disturbed than most people. I'm still disturbed, but it, it doesn't take long. I'm disturbed in mind and then, then a few moments later, oh, let it go. But 30 years ago, I would become disturbed and it would take weeks and this and that. And so it, it, this process, Krishna purifies you in heart. Takes up, and, and what's the problem? Why we can't out, well, why, we, why do we exploit others? We exploit others because we are acting out of lust, anger, greed, madness illusion, envy, we, we want honor, prestige, it's all temporary, it's, it's, it's so, so quickly gone. I'm nearly age 60 now, I remember 55 years ago when I was a child. All the, person, all the persons I know, they are dead. The village where, where I was living, 
that they speak another language there, other buildings, nobody knows me anymore. I was thinking, and sometimes I think, did it really happen? That, what's the proof? It's all different. It so goes all the time. Krishna says, I'm time, the destroyer of everything. So when we, when we understand these things, then we can come first to peace. That's the first thing. Peace means understanding I'm not the body. I'm not going to die. The body dies. Death is like nine months sleeping. And you get up in another body. There you are again. That. So that there is nothing to fear about. One becomes fearless. There is nothing to achieve. We are if, if, you are, if you understand everything belongs to God and is for his service, then you are not attached to anything. That, but that, that requires knowledge. Like, like you, have, you have someone, I was in New York a few weeks ago and in Manhattan, and a, a cyclist came and he lost his wallet, fell on the street. So someone loses his wallet and you see it falling. There are now three things you can do. The man is gone with the cycle and the wallet is there. The first thing you can do is you can say, it's not mine. I leave it there. The second thing you can do is you take the wallet, you take the money, and then you use it for your own sense. Again, I'm going to enjoy with this money. Great, my lucky day. And then the third thing you can do is you can take the wallet, look inside, you find the driving license and says, okay, this is his address, I contact the person, I give it back to the owner. So that's God consciousness. Everything belongs to Krishna and we give it back to him out of love. Not for I'm mine, but with I'm mine, there is no spiritual experience. Spiritual experience comes on that platform, and that's the beginning. And in the higher realm, you get a happiness which is unknown to anything, anyone in this world. This greater spiritual happiness, but one has become qualified for them. And there are, there are no material means to meet, to, to measure the happiness or the ecstasy that the soul feels. It's not possible. It's not an experience in the brain. Hi, Christian. Okay. Something else? Yeah, okay. Uh, I have a lot of questions. Yeah, okay. <laughs> then, of course, we have to see how long can we go. We probably have maybe five or ten minutes. Five or ten minutes, okay. okay. So these three questions we will take and I'll finish, yeah. Thank you. Bhakti uh, Prabhu Samara, thank you very much for beautiful Kirtan uh, and the lectures. Yeah, I... We, we, we look at our fingerprints. Everyone has a different fingerprint here, right? <coughs> Nobody has the same. That uh, it's not possible. It means, yeah, it means us living under this. We are all unique, unique, and we have all a unique relationship with God. But that will only manifest when we purify our heart. Now it's, it's true, Every, everything beautiful in this world is coming from Krishna. And that, that's why this, uh, we become attracted to the material world. That Krishna says, all the whole creation is just, is just a spark of my splendor. Yes, Krishna so says... Is it true, is Maya or Krishna? Hmm. Maya has also come from Krishna. And yeah. This whole but, but, the, kind of. but, but the Maya, the illusion, is in our heart, in our consciousness. And that has to be removed. The illusion is 
that we see all the, the things in this world for our enjoyment and we think it's mine and that's the only problem if we see everything in this world and we, we recognize it's beautiful like I give you an example of two, two different consciousness one who is not in God consciousness and one who is in God consciousness they see both a, a flower, a beautiful flower and this flower, a beautiful flower see a flower the materialist think, thinks, oh that's a beautiful flower, let me sniff from it let me enjoy it and the devotee will think, oh that's a beautiful flower let me offer that to my Lord and just that's the difference that's it I'm also a Christian and I'm still a Christian I'm sorry to say that some are about to contest that but I'm not a Christian that I never left my belief behind but I see Jesus Christ and everything he does through the knowledge of Bhagavad Gita. This is the, the signs of the soul. This is the signs of the soul. It's not really a religion. It's Dharma, the signs of the soul. The, the, that, uh, so we have to change our consciousness because the spirit soul want to enjoy it. We, that's what we all want. You go in the street and you ask people, what's the goal of your life? <coughs> they will say, my, my life, it's, it's to enjoy. You live only once. You live only once, they cannot prove. <coughs> but but it's, it's true, it's to enjoy. But enjoyment of the soul is on the spiritual platform. And spiritual platform means connecting everything with God not taking it at ours. As a Christian, I was praying with, and I'm still doing it, it's now another song, but uh, we are praying to the Lord, thank you for your daily bread. There is, there is respect, it comes from God, it's a gift from God, and that's recognized. And that's the beginning of God consciousness. Seeing everything, Francis from Assisi, saw the trees, the, the moon, and, 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 and all as, as, as his, and all the plants, and animals, and humans, as, as their brothers. They are all spirit souls. That, that is spiritual vision. So, attraction is good. If, it's, if we can consciously relate it to Krishna. If the attraction comes for, it's for my enjoyment, I'm mine, then it's going to lead to unhappiness, <coughs> dissatisfaction, trying to enjoy this body. I don't know if I answered your question. Okay, my question is unclear. Is it just like a different angle of perception and turning to be um, like just to change the nature that you are not the pollution, the, the controller, but you are the you are created, the one who gives the enjoyment, and no. we are giving yourself to, to God, and your purpose is to please Him, and you take enjoyment from pleasing Him and the happiness from bringing Him happiness. That's as simple as that. The problem is, for the millions of for millions of births, we do the opposite, and. It's very difficult to give up, give up the old habits. <laughs> it's change of consciousness, yes. It's simple. And also another question. Oh, yeah. that, that, that's explained in Bhagavad Gita. Krishna says there are three modes of material nature. Passion, ignorance, goodness. Sattva, Bajagun, and Thomas. That, uh, the one must study these three levels. If one lives a life in, in, in Tamagun, in ignorance, one is addicted to alcohol, eats a lot of meat, and, 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 and kills animals to eat, the, and, and, and that uh, 
and is dirty, uh, think, thinks always about one's own enjoyment, and especially very simple things, things like, like extreme sex drive and so on. And that uh, this is what the animals do. They want to eat, sleep, have sex life. There's a, if you act as if you act as a dog in this life, that uh, just living for your senses, that well, Krishna says, next life you become a dog. Don't make it too complicated. In a dog life, you don't have to work hard. You can you, you can eat whatever you want. You become a dog. A hawk can have sex with, with, with his mother, with his daughter. Nobody will complain. And, and if he eats too much, and what, whatever he eats, nobody will complain when he's getting too fat. So in dog life, becomes more easy for such a person. And those in the mode of passion, the mode of passion means they want to enjoy the body. Especially, they, they want to have sexual enjoyment, they want to, to get possessions, they strive for happiness of the body in an extreme way. That, uh, so that's the, it, it depends, it depends according to the, because nobody is pure in the mode of passion, mostly it's combinations. But such persons, if they are religions and have some principles and are not big meat eaters and so on, they may get again the human form. And one in the mode of goodness, one of the good mode of goodness, Krishna says, that uh, who does not come to the spiritual platform, he can either get the human form again or a higher human form, the demigods, the, 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 the heavenly planets where one can live for, for, for 10,000 of years, but that's with their good karma, then they have to come back. So this is in relation to the next life. Uh, and that, but even if you become a dog, you go again to the evolution of bodies. You get you, you get hundred dog lives, and then you 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 become a monkey, and finally you get a can the human form of life. But that takes many, many, many births, many births. Krishna says, those who are very sinful, act for lust, anger, and greed, I throw them in. in to the to the, the lower species of life. That's where you end up. But it's not eternally. After a few millions of years you yeah, get again the human form. In the human form we can understand who we are, where we come from, where we go. We can understand who God is, who we are. If we don't use that 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 form for making spiritual advancement, then we are not different from the animals. Animals, they identify with the body. If we in this life also identify with the body, we yeah, are not different. Anyway, I'm just telling you the truth as Krishna gives us. So it's very hard to just digest for some. I'm sure that. Last question. There was one more question. Questions always from the brain. Yeah, that yeah. this Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita in the seventeenth chapter, because he explained the law in Bhagavad Gita, it's the divisions of fate. You have the fate according to the modes of nature, in ignorance, passion and goodness. That uh, and then you have transcendental religion. So uh, we cannot say like that, that Islam is like that, or Christianity is that. In Christianity, I can tell you, there are all these levels. The highest level is like 
con Assisi. E cosa fece Terry? He was, he, he saw, he understood that the consciousness, a bad word is consciousness, these are living beings, parts of God. He understood that, and by that, he's not very different than a self-realized soul. So that's transcendental. So Popat was in Australia and was, was received by the Franciscaners and he gave a talk there and, and we had a, ni- a very nice relationship. He said his followers of Francis from Assisi, they are Vaishnavas, they are devotees of God, like we are. So you cannot put a rubber stamp and say this religion is that, that religion is that. Srila Prabhupada won't answer for that. Never criticize those of other religions. But does not mean that every religion is going to lead to the same path. But, yeah, we are going gradually, life after life. And that, and that. But when you follow the spiritual path, when you switch religions, it's very rare and becomes very rare in, this, in these times. That I just read on the internet a few days ago that the, the youth in, in England only 1% is still connected with the Church of England. The youth. And 60% of all the residents in, in, in the UK are atheists, no religion. So I'm happy to cooperate with everyone with religion for what, whatever kind. The, their conception of God may be different, but it, it, at least they are on a spiritual path. And, and because, because religion without knowledge is sen- sentimentalism. And knowledge without religion is mental speculation. So both must be there. And Krishna consciousness gives the signs of the soul, the, uh, gives the knowledge behind why things are happening in this world. It explains so many things. That, uh, but not everyone is ready to accept it. Jesus Christ said, at, at, at the end, yes, I could not reveal them everything. God, things they are not ready for, but, but those who are on the religious path, where some believe in the Supreme, and who accept that the goal it is to develop love for God, they are all great. And we should all respect them. Huh? Does that help to understand it? Thank you very much. I was very happy to be with you. Shilaboba, Kay, 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 Kay,